So basically, I had a YouTube channel before this one of about... We were on our way to essentially 1k subs. I think the peak was 730 subscribers. And I... If I'd have continued with that channel, I would have reached 1k subs by the end of 2023. So what was the reason that I decided to completely private all of the videos on that channel and then create a new one? Essentially, um, I sort of became disillusioned with that channel. There were many things that were sort of... Well, I guess the main one is that the videos I was making on that channel didn't match self-improvement whatsoever. I created the channel when I was like 12 years old because uh, I lied about my age on YouTube. You have to be 13 to make a channel uh, or an account at least, I think. I don't know. And I lied about my age because a lot of people at the time in... I think ever since primary school, I've been quite a, you know, comedic guy and people were saying like, oh, you need to you need to make a YouTube channel. But I was like, oh, I'm not old enough. I might, I might get in trouble. The big YouTube bots might come to my house. <laughs> so... I waited a bit to make a channel and then eventually I did and the thing about the channel was is that obviously as any like channel that you make when you're like 11, 12 years old, the videos to begin with were crap. It was just me playing different, they were basically comedy sketches and like parodies of stuff so there's a TV show called Storage Wars where people bet on different storage units and like buy them but then I created a different version that was based around... A guy that was German, so it was called Storage Vaz instead of Wars. <laughs> and it was just stupid stuff like that. I had no scripting in my videos, obviously no decent thumb making skills. Thumb making, thumbnail making skills, God. Um I just made them on my crappy well not crappy, I I really appreciate the MacBook that my mum got me, but obviously the software on it to make thumbnails is not great. I wasn't aware of stuff like Canva or Photoshop and the like. So I, the essentially the thumbnails were too small for the video, so you just have these black borders on each side every time I uploaded the video. Um, but I would just make videos sort of, my friends would watch them and they find it funny, so I kept making them. But then... Obviously, as I got older, I've made, at this point, I've made about 20-odd videos or something over the past. So I, the problem was I was never consistent with the upload schedule because videos took a while to make. I had to wait till, like, my parents were out of the house so I didn't get bothered by making them while I was making them. And, you know, I didn't have to worry about scripting because, like I said, I didn't bother with that. I didn't, I didn't actually make a decent YouTube script. But I sort of... I kept going with the videos and then I think it was around, I don't remember, I think when it started getting in, I started getting into self-improvement at the start of 2023, February 2023, I started, um, you know, I started maybe trying to take YouTube a bit more serious because as Hamza says on his videos, he says that, you know, if you could make a YouTube channel talking about self-improvement. But I was just like, well, I have a comedy channel, so I can't really sort of put self-improvement on my video because it will get no views whatsoever because that's not people who, who are subscribed to me. So I made a video called How to Improve Yourself that was a parody of self-improvement. And um, yeah, you could tell that the people, a lot of my friends at the time were subscribed to me and I got a comment on my um, on one of the vi that video from a friend who was saying like... Um, um, what was it? Oh yes, now I cannot have fun for the rest of my life. Goodbye, feelings and emotions. Hello, toxic masculinity. Because it's the kind of people that refuse to understand other po people's points of view and just label everything as misogyny or toxic masculinity because it was based on Hamza's videos. And I was making those videos for a while and I was getting decent success. I was getting, you know, 100 views every video. Uh, I made a video called, it wasn't, it was sort of a parody, it was more of like a video mini essay called Why Star Wars is the Worst Franchise of All Time, but the room that I live in has got a massive, the room that I live in, my bedroom, <laughs> has got a massive stormtrooper on the wall and like tons of Star Wars memorabilia because I was, you know, a 10 year old when the room was made and there's no point redecorating. Um... So that was basically the joke. I'm on the mic complaining about Star Wars when I've got a massive stormtrooper behind me. 
But some people cannot understand the joke as some of the comments on that video revealed. But anyway. Um, that video did pretty well as well. Got 500 views and I started getting some traction. But then I had one friend suggest to me. He said, oh, why don't you start doing YouTube shorts? Now, I was a bit iffy about YouTube shorts because I wasn't sure, you know, people saying the algorithm for them is crap. So I started, I made a YouTube short. And it was it was stupid. It was like eat my YouTube shorts. And I just put YouTube on my shorts. I was like, ah, funny, ha. Ah. <laughs> and so I created I created that short, and it got like a hundred odd views in twenty four hours. So I was like, okay. And then I forget. I keep forgetting what exactly my early videos were. But I made one that had two thousand views, and it got me like a decent amount of subscribers. And I was like, okay. I guess we've just made the formula. I essentially found like a loophole in a uh, YouTube's hashtag system where I'd essentially put hashtag viral on the video, even though it wasn't a viral video, and then that would like pair it with different viral videos, and that means that it would like boost the amount of people that see it and views that I get. So I'd be getting like five thousand views, seven thousand views. I think that's like fixed now because anytime I tried to put hashtag viral in the uh, hashtags of the YouTube short, it just wouldn't work. So I think they fixed that. But I exploited that loophole for a bit, and that's when I started getting mad subscriber growth. I was getting like 50 subs. 50 subs every time I posted a new YouTube short, which was crazy, because my YouTube growth was just sort of like, you know, slowly, and then I wouldn't upload for six months, and then it was, you know, complete roller coaster. But I, you know, I, I was like, right, maybe I should start... Actually, I took a break from the shorts, because I uploaded a short that got like like 60 odd views and that's when i needed to focus on more schoolwork. but then i got back into the shorts and that i got a short that got like 9,000 views i was like right consistently uploading daily shorts you know i was getting you know 600 500 subscribers 600 subscribers 700 subscribers crazy and then <laughs> on that short that got 9,000 views it was essentially <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it, there's a YouTube show of um, a chuffing emo guy looking like Sonic the Hedgehog. He was standing on a picnic table singing the song, Sticking Out Your Gat for the Rizzler. <laughs> Goddamn cringe, but he's there and, and I essentially would remix a lot of shorts. So I wasn't even creative and make my own stuff. I would remix shorts. I'd take bits of other people's shorts and it's just me basically reacting to it in a funny scenario. So I do that show and it's a guy on the picnic table and it comes to me going like, all I wanted was a sodden picnic. <laughs> and, you know, people found that funny. And it was getting close to 10,000 views when I got notified on YouTube Studio that someone had like remixed my video, which was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I've never had someone remix my remix before because that's all it was. But when I looked on the video that they had remixed, Essentially, they didn't want my part in the video. They'd essentially just cut out the bit of the guy on the table, and then you can see me for one frame. And then the person who made the video was a a kid, of, I'd say around 10 years old, and he's there holding a Prime bottle, <laughs> a bottle of, like, limited edition baseball Prime. And he's just like, oh, you're sticking out your gap for the Rizzler. That's so weird. And then I stopped for a minute and I was like, is this, this must be my audience. Like, <laughs> my audience must just be majority 10 year olds. And how can I relate to an audience like that? So I go on my recently subscribed section on the YouTube studio and I, you know, start clicking on the channels and it's all a bunch of like 10 year olds, 9 year olds who like make videos saying like, hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to my life. I've just been to school and. I'm just like, I can't relate to any of them because they're just kids, you know. Just trying to spit everywhere. Um, but I was I was just like, all right, I think something needs to change here. Because not only was I being disingenuous to myself because I'm someone who's on self-improvement, but yet I was creating these like colourful dopamine shorts and stuff. Like I was creating something that, I didn't condone 
Like, if I'm making YouTube shorts like that, I'm contri contributing to, like, people scrolling and be like, oh, that's a funny video, and then they'll immediately forget it after going through five YouTube shorts. It, w it was just stupid, and, you know, it's just... I don't condone kids being on YouTube shorts because that's, like, the worst, you know. Uh, today, I got back from Liverpool where I went with my family to celebrate my birthday, and at breakfast, uh, at breakfast in the hotel I was staying... I saw a family across from us on a table, and there were these two kids, they, one had an iPad, one had a phone, and they, you know, the dad both gave them headphones, and they just sat there, like, <laughs> watching, and then the dad went to go get their breakfast, and they just sat there watching their YouTube or whatever things they were watching, and I was just like, <laughs> if, if I make shorts, I'm contributing to that, I'm, you know, actively you know, promoting kids to go on YouTube shorts or whatever. Let me check the run time. 11 minutes. Oh, we're going in hard. <laughs> but I just... And it was that point that I was like, right, I need a complete change of... change of... Uh, trage trajectory on my YouTube channel. I also need speech therapy lessons, apparently. So I was like, right, I created a new YouTube channel, this YouTube channel, Mac... And I didn't tell any of my um, any of my friends about it uh, because them. Well, I say friends. Essentially, all the people that knew my old channel, I wasn't going to tell them because they are just Jeffries. Like they don't they don't support me on my self improvement journey. They think I'm not going down there. You know, it's the same friends that I said I'd outgrown in the loneliness of self improvement video. You know, they would just. They wouldn't support me doing this kind of videos and if they would watch the videos it would like mess up my algorithm and stuff because the video would be like how is this guy self-improvement or does he want people to watch anime clips <laughs> like which one is it so i didn't tell them about it but you know i slowly making some videos i think we're currently on four subscribers so shout out to all of you four subscribers out there and um from what I can tell of the comments, there's uh, people that are actually on self-improvement and make self-improvement content themselves. And that's the kind of audience that I can relate to. And, you know, obviously, I appreciate them watching my videos. It's better than just some prime-fueled 10-year-old <laughs> watching my video. Um, and so that's also why I made the decision to, like, private all of the videos on that old channel. Because, A, I, I think it would be a bit cringy if someone from this channel just found those videos and started just posting them everywhere because a lot of the videos are complete cringe. And the second reason was I wanted to see how long it would take those old friends to see, like, you know, when they um, when they would say, like, why, why have you privated all your videos? And... Um, this happened eventually, like, a week later. They were like, oh, where's, where's all your video go gone? They've all gone. And, um... I was just sort of like, oh, I've, I've made a new channel. Like, oh, what's the new channel called? And I just refused to tell them because they just mess up my algorithm. That's plain and simple. I don't want those kind of people who do Jeffrey Habits to watch my videos. So that in a nutshell is the story of why I completely scrapped a channel of five years. Um, nearly easily could have reached 1,000 subscribers. So I, I doubt that I would have got the 4,000 hours of watch time needed and the... I think for the shorts requirement, you need like 30, 10 million YouTube shorts views, something crazy like that. And hell, if I'd have, you know, put enough time into it, I'm sure I would have got that. But like I said, I was just disillusioned and that's why I needed a new outlet so I could, you know, relate to people and actually make videos and actually contribute to something that I, you know, actually believe in. I didn't. I felt like a complete fraud just making these like YouTube shorts where it's just like I remixed one where it was like it's this woman doctor and she just does like promiscuous like I've made a video about degeneracy of like women being promiscuous and stuff and then I'm you know making making YouTube shorts about women like put, sticking their ass out on a table going this is uh, my um, stretching as a medical assistant and then she's just got a bum out and then I'm just like there like oh guys <laughs> oh god so that's why I got rid of those videos because I just I was being a complete hypocrite I was telling you know 
people to get on self-improvement i'm on self-improvement myself but then i'm making those kind of videos it was absolutely ridiculous but anyway i appreciate you taking the time to listen to me and i hope you will stick around for many more videos to come take care bro god bless Mwah.